Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor Jim Pytel and today's topic of discussion is dependent sources. Our objective is to introduce dependent voltage and current sources. This lecture is unusual is that it is intended to service both the DC and AC circuit analysis playlists. First we'll examine dependent DC sources and then dependent AC sources. There is very little difference between them. If your interest is exclusively one-sided, by all means feel free to skip the portions of this lecture that are not relevant to your interest. This lecture is also unusual in that it's pretty easy and pretty short. Enjoy the rest while you can. I'll make sure the next lecture is twice as hard and twice as long. First, let's take a look at dependent DC sources, of which there are four types. Voltage controlled voltage sources, current controlled voltage sources, voltage controlled current sources, and finally, current controlled current sources. Up until this point, we've dealt with sources of fixed magnitude. For example, a 12 volt source is 12 volts today, it's 12 volts tomorrow, and it was most likely 12 volts yesterday. The same can be said of current sources. These previous types of fixed magnitude sources would be considered independent sources, and that the output is independent of any other electrical property. There can and do exist sources with variable outputs proportional to some other electrical property called dependent sources. Dependent sources are often depicted schematically using a diamond. A dependent voltage source is a diamond with a positive and negative polarity markers. A dependent current source is a diamond with an arrow indicating the direction of conventional current. Oftentimes, the output of a dependent source is dependent on some controlling voltage or current signal in some other system or within the same system. This allows for four different varieties of dependent sources. Notably, number one, voltage controlled voltage sources, where output voltage is proportional to some dimensionless constant A times the controlling voltage value Vx. For example, consider a voltage controlled voltage source, where output voltage is six times Vx, and Vx, wherever it might be, happens to be two volts. Output of this voltage controlled voltage source would be 6 times 2 volts or 12 volts. If, however, the controlling voltage signal dropped to 1.5 volts, output of the voltage controlled voltage source would be 6 times 1.5 volts or 9 volts. 2. Current controlled voltage sources, where output voltage is proportional to some constant B times the controlling current value Ix. Constant B would have the dimensions of volts per amp. For example, Consider a current controlled voltage source where output voltage is 30 volts per amp times Ix, and Ix, wherever it might be, happens to be 750 milliampers. Output of this current controlled voltage source will be 30 volts per amp times 750 milliampers, or 22.5 volts. If, however, the controlling current signal rose to 800 milliampers, output of this current controlled voltage source would be 30 volts per amp times 800 milliampers, or 24 volts. Three, Voltage controlled current sources, where output voltage is proportional to some constant C times the controlling voltage value Vx. Constant C would have the dimensions of amps per volt. For example, consider a voltage controlled current source where output voltage is 0.2 amps per volt times Vx. And Vx, wherever it might be, happens to be 5 volts. Output of this voltage controlled current source would be 0.2 amps per volt times 5 volts or 1 amp. If, however, the controlling voltage signal dropped to 4.5 volts, the output of this voltage controlled current source would be 0.2 amps per volt times 4.5 volts or 900 milliampers. And finally, 4. Current controlled current source, where output current is proportional to some dimensionless constant D times the controlling current value Ix. For example, consider a current controlled current source where output current is 200 times Ix. Then Ix wherever it might be, happens to be 60 microamps. Output of this current controlled current source would be 200 times 60 microamps, or 12 milliampers. If, however, the current controlling signal rose to 75 microamperes, the output of this current controlled current source would be 200 times 75 microamps, or 15 milliampers. For the purposes of this lecture, we're assuming all dependent sources produce output times some constant, although other more complicated mathematical relationships might exist. The reason for this assumption is that a semiconductor device known as a transistor, which we'll examine in much later lectures, can sometimes be modeled as a dependent source, where output is proportional to some controlling signal, either voltage or current, times some gain factor. You'd think this gain would be constant, perfectly linear, but it isn't, 
and the upper and lower regions, you might notice nonlinearities. This being said, inside the typical operational range, it's a simple matter of multiplying the controlling signal times some constant. On a very basic level, that is that. You want the AC version? Go back and stick a sinusoidal wave inside each of the schematic symbols and then use the phasor equivalents for the controlling voltage and current. Seriously, it is that easy. The sinusoidal output of a dependent AC source is proportional to some external controlling signal, either voltage or current, times some constant. On a more challenging level, consider a dependent source and its natural habitat. Often, dependent sources are found inside systems with more than one source, and sometimes the controlling signal, voltage or current, is inside that same system. This is where it gets hard. Consider a voltage-controlled voltage source where the output of the dependent source is proportional to six times V3, where the controlling signal V3 is inside the same circuit. This is one of those chicken or the egg type quandaries that will have you chasing your tail for quite some time if you approach this using traditional circuit analysis techniques. The output of the dependent source is proportional to the voltage signal V3, which is proportional to the output of the dependent voltage source, which is proportional to the signal V3, which is on and on and on. For this reason, when presented with a circuit incorporating dependent sources in such a fashion, we often need to resort to special use tactics, notably mesh and or nodal analysis if you're trapped in the 1950s, or for those of you in the modern era, special purpose equipment like circuit simulation software. We'll examine the analysis of circuits incorporating dependent sources in later lectures. For now, I just wanted this lecture to serve as a quick introduction to dependent sources. In conclusion, this lecture introduced four different types of dependent sources. Voltage-controlled voltage sources, current-controlled voltage sources, voltage-controlled current sources, and finally, current-controlled current sources. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.